Hello, and welcome back to Gaming Out of Suitcases. I'm Sean Rice from the International Tour of the Adams Family, and this is my vlog where I tell you about games that I like that travel very well. This week we're looking at one of my favorites. I'm a big horror fan. Shocker, right? And the father of modern horror is, of course, H.P. Lovecraft. A lot of his writings deal with the idea that there are prehistoric creatures called Ancient Ones, and they are asleep somewhere on the Earth, in mountains or under the oceans, but if they were to ever wake up, they would reclaim the Earth and bat humanity aside like a fly. Most of his main characters end up going insane or disappear after coming into contact with horrible creatures or cultists that are trying to wake up the ancient ones. His works have inspired many movies, books, and games, including Elder Sign by Fantasy Flight Games. Elder Sign is a cooperative game, meaning that all the players work together to try to defeat the board, which is actually playing against you like another character. You take on the role of investigators who are exploring Miskatonic University's museum, where a bunch of strange events have been occurring because of the Ancient One's imminent rise. By overcoming these encounters, the investigators hope to collect Elder Signs, which are ancient symbols used to keep the Ancient Ones at bay. But the clock is always ticking, and every night at midnight, the Ancient One gets a little closer to coming out into our world. If the Ancient One does wake up, all the investigators will come together in one final battle with it, which is nearly impossible and will probably end in death. Sounds fun, right? Here's how it works. First, every player is assigned an investigator. Or, because this is a co-op game, if you're playing solo, you can choose to be one investigator, two, three, four, however many you want, as long as you can keep track of what's going on. Each investigator has a few starting qualities. Sanity. Now this keeps track of how sane you are. You will lose this as you come into contact with horrible creatures. Stamina. This tracks how well your body's holding up. If you come into contact with a lot of dangerous things, you might lose some. A special ability. Every character has one special thing that no one else can do. Starting items. This is what your character brings with you into the museum. Items can be very, very helpful in completing adventures. Next, the Ancient One is chosen. Now, just like our investigators, the Ancient One has a lot of qualities that will affect how the game plays. The Ancient One's Elder Sign Limit. This lets you know how many Elder Signs you have to collect to seal that Ancient One away. The Doom Track. This is basically a countdown to when the Ancient One wakes up. Now, some of these spaces just report eminent doom, while some of them show where monsters enter the museum. And final battle information. Now, if the Ancient One wakes up, this shows you what the investigators must roll to, to successfully attack it, while this shows you exactly how the Ancient One is going to fight back. Pretty nasty. Now, once everyone has been assigned an investigator and the Ancient One is chosen, you'll set up your playing board to look like this. At the top of the play area is the museum entrance. Now, this is where you will start the game. It's also where you can go to heal yourself, or to turn in trophies that you've won to buy other items or elder signs. Now there's also a clock up here. This shows you how close to midnight you are. Below that is our adventure area. Each card represents an adventure that can be completed. The bottom of the card shows you what you will lose if you fail the adventure and what you will win if you succeed. You win adventures by rolling dice to complete the task listed on the cards. Now you always have access to six green dice, but using items can sometimes add a yellow or a red dice to your Pool. Yellow and red dice give you more chance of success because they have more investigation and lore icons and less peril and terror icons. The red dice even has a wild icon, which lets you choose what icon you need. When you try to complete a task, you will roll your pool of dice. If you've completed that task, take those dice and set them off to the side. Then move on to your next task using only the dice you have left over. If you didn't complete that task, you will lose one die from your pool. You get to choose which. Every time you try, you'll lose a die. If you ever run out of dice before you've completed all the tasks, then you have failed the adventure. Very sad. If you fail the adventure, then you have to pay the price. If you succeed, then you get to reap your reward. You also get to keep the adventure card as a trophy, and replace it with a new adventure card from the deck. At the end of every investigator's turn, the clock will move ahead three hours. Now, when the clock reaches midnight, that is when the game plays. You will turn over a Mythos card. Now, the Mythos card has two parts. In the top, it will show you what immediately happens when you turn over the card some kind of effect, like adding a doom token or a monster. On the bottom shows a lingering effect, and this would take place all throughout the next round until the next Mythos card is turned over. Basically, it's a battle against time and fate as you run all over this museum trying to collect Elder Signs and keep the monsters at bay. If you're an Arkham Horror fan, you will probably like this game. It has a very similar feel, however, it is a lot quicker to play, it generally runs about 40 minutes to an hour, instead of four to five hours, and it's generally easier to teach new people 
people because there's so much less mechanics involved. It's also very compact. Everything that you need for the game fits into one tiny pencil box, which means you can travel it very easily. Now there are a few expansions that Fantasy Flight has put out that add more ancient ones to your pool and try to make the game a lot harder. And they've recently come up with an app version of the game, which means you can download it to your MacBook, you can download it to your tablet, or your smartphone and play on the go. It's really a fun game, and I hope I've wet your whistle with this one, and you'll be back on Wednesday to check out a more in-depth look at the rules and a full playthrough of Elder Sign. Until then, grab an ancient tome, keep hold of your sanity, and keep gaming!